In 2022, Holy Week begins on April 10th, which is Palm Sunday, and concludes on April 17th, which is Easter Sunday. And Holy Week marks for us the end of this 40-day period of Lent. So during that Holy Week, we observe Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday. So I'm going to take a minute to help us all understand a little bit more about what each of these days means. Palm Sunday commemorates Jesus' triumphant entry into the city of Jerusalem. After resurrecting his friend uh, Lazarus, Jesus became a total influencer and his immense popularity actually frightened the established leaders to the point where they got serious about a plan to kill him. On this day, however, everybody from all around the nation celebrated Jesus and cheered him on as he entered Jerusalem. You may notice in a lot of churches, they, they also read the Passion story on this Sunday. You know, So they start with the entry into Jerusalem and then end the worship service on Palm Sunday with the story of the Passion. Uh, the story of Jesus' trial and crucifixion. Here at St. John's, however, we rejoice with the crowds in this moment of excitement and joy, even knowing what's just around the corner. So we will read the Passion story too, but we do that on Good Friday, remembering that we don't want to be the crowd that turns their back on their Savior. Maundy Thursday begins the period that we call the three days, which represents the three days between Jesus' death and resurrection. So technically, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the worship services are all really one long extended worship service. Um, for those of you who go to Saturday Vigil, the Saturday Vigil service is that night before the resurrection where we, where we sit and have a, a, a vigil. So uh, during Thursday, Friday, and, and, and if you have a Saturday worship service, you won't hear a benediction or a blessing uh, during any of those. So from Palm Sunday all the way to Easter, we leave in silence as we continue one long worship service. But I know everybody's wondering, and ask, people ask me this every year, why do we call it Maundy Thursday anyway? Well, it seems to come from the Latin version of the scriptures. Um, because after Jesus washed the feet of the disciples on uh, the night of the Last Supper, that Thursday night, he said, now I give you a new commandment. Now in Latin, that sentence is mandatum novum do vobis. The key word is mandatum. So man mandatum is mandate, right? And that word morphed among non-Latin speakers into from mandatum to mandy to mondi. So it's really um, commandment Thursday. And that commandment was, you may remember, love each other the way I loved you. <laughs> but on this night, on Maundy Thursday evening, we don't actually wash each other's feet. Uh, but although we don't do that, we do concentrate on the even more pivotal moment of that night, and that is the Last Supper. On that night, Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his disciples and said, essentially, from now on, whenever you celebrate this meal, I will be the lamb. This bread will be my body. This wine will be my own blood. So it is on this night that the Passover meal literally became communion, or what we know as the Eucharist. And also during our worship service on Monday Thursday, we include some time for you to come to the altar uh, and offer individual confession and absolution. And that's a nice, wonderful, intimate period of worship too. Also at the end of the Monday Thursday worship, we strip the worship space of all the decorations and all the symbols, which helps us remember that Jesus was also stripped of his royalty, his identity, and everything else when the religious leaders and the Roman government decided to press charges that night. Good Friday. Here's another name that people always ask about. Why is it Good Friday if it's such an awful, terrible, horrible day? Well, it is. And in German, it's actually called Awful Friday or Sorrowful Friday. Um, we often say that it's it's good because Jesus' actions on this day lead to the resurrection, and that's what we're all about. But I understand I still don't like the term good necessarily, um, but this makes more sense to me. Um, some people say, a lot of people say, that it was originally called 
God's Friday, which involve, evolved into Good Friday, God's Friday, God Friday, Good Friday. Um, so uh, we have two different kinds of worship services on God's Friday. At noon, we remember the crucifixion itself and we carry a cross into the worship space physically. And then we give you some time to write down any sins you'd like to have forgiven and nail them or stick them onto that cross that we brought in. That way we remember that, that Jesus carried all our sins onto his cross on, on that awful, terrible, sorrowful day. And in the evening on Good Friday, we have another service which is slightly different. And that is where we tell the story of Christ's trial and crucifixion, that passion story that we talked about, you know, and we tell that whole story over again in a series of short readings. And after each reading, another light gets turned off in the worship space so that um, after the very last reading, it is completely dark and we are faced with the stark reminder of the pain and the loss that everyone felt when they thought they had lost Jesus forever. Easter Sunday. Now, Easter probably needs the least explanation. We all know what it is, right? In the morning of the third day, everybody who went to the tomb discovered that he wasn't there. Then Jesus began to appear to people and let them know that God had raised him up again and he was alive. So this is the day that we wait for all year long, the day we get to say Christ is risen. He has defeated both sin and death and made it possible for us to do the same exact thing. <laughs> Lutherans are often called resurrection people because we focus on the empty cross and the victory that Christ achieved for all of us on that Easter morning. So we celebrate that day with the biggest music and the biggest pageantry of the whole year on Easter morning. Easter morning fills us with the hope and the joy and love for God and for our neighbor. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So there's your crash course in Holy Week worship. I hope that all of this will help you immerse yourself in every moment of the week to make the life and death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ come alive in your heart. Thanks for listening. See you in church.